Welcome back to First Up, the first stop in your busy day. We just came out of a segment in which we talked about diversifying the economy. And one of the pillars of that diversification is innovation and uh, basically harnessing ICT, that's information and communications technology. Well, we're going to be focusing on that aspect of it, uh, talking about the Caribbean ICT Roadshow that's going to be sweeping through us over the next few days or so. Uh, it's, a, it's a project with the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, along with our government here under the uh, Public Admin Ministry. And that ICT Roadshow will be taking place uh, this week at the, at the uh, Trinidad Hilton and Conference Center. To tell us more about that, we have Rodney Taylor from the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. We also have Julian Hall uh, from Pure Online Genius. Rodney, of course, uh, based in Barbados and a Barbadian. And uh, Julian uh, from the United Kingdom. So, gentlemen, good morning. Welcome. Thanks for joining us on set. Good and morning. Good morning. Uh, let's hear some more about the ICT Roadshow. Well, the, the Caribbean ICT Roadshow, and just one correction, I'm based here in Trinidad, actually, okay. because the CTU Secretariat is based in Trinidad, mm -hmm. and it's an initiative of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, which is aimed uh, towards promoting the innovative use of ICTs across the entire um, sectors of the society. The one that, we're that is being held in Trinidad this week is actually the 13th that we've held in the, in the, in the region. So Trinidad is the 13th country that we've held the uh, roadshow in in the Caribbean. And um, it takes place on Thursday and Friday at the Trinidad Hilton and Conference Center um, from 8.30 a.m. And we have loads of details on our website, uh, www.ctu.int, which outlines the entire program. Uh, we have um, an innovator and entrepreneurship uh, workshop. We have uh, a, a community outreach program. We also have a youth forum, actually, for, for, um, that will involve a competition uh, amongst the schools within the country um, uh, centered around ICT uh, topics. Now, you know, just for the average Joe out there, if they don't understand the acronym ICT, yes. maybe we could explain it to them this morning. Yes, I'm sorry to, to, for, to uh, throw it in there like that, but it's uh, information and communication technologies. And we all use them every day, um, computer systems, uh, even your mobile phone, even television, radio, and so on. That would all fall under the definition of information and communication technology. Let's move now to Julian Hall, Pure Online Genius. Are you one of the exhibitors who would be, uh, you know, facilitating some of what we'll be seeing at the roadshow? Yeah, so uh, myself, um, I'll be hosting the uh, Innovation and Entrepreneurship um, two-day workshop, which we've done um, quite successfully in 2010, starting off in Washington, um, then to the British Virgin Islands, St. Martin, we gave uh, an address to a delegation in Dominica and, uh, and, and we're happy to be here again in Trinidad. So it'll be a two day workshop looking at things like, you know, a framework for innovation, what it's like to, you know, to, to be an entrepreneur in today's market and essentially um, how you can leverage technology today and ICT to be able to get yourself greater visibility um, across the region and to reduce costs, to get into the market more easily and things of that nature. So to really encourage that, that spirit of entrepreneurship using innovation in the region. When people hear that kind of discussion taking place, the first thing they think about is, before they get the explanation, of course, oh, does this mean that I'm going to learn how to become a dot-com millionaire? You know, it's not a far cry. Um, <laughs> we, have a, um, we have a really good case study. Uh, myself and Mark Lewis met uh, a small um, software development house in the British Virgin Islands who actually came from Montserrat. And they developed a really cool technology um, on the iPhone, on the, on the iPhone um, platform. And what's remarkable about their story is that they come from, you know, obviously a very small island, a group of really, of three or four really talented developers. But what they were able to do using technology was to give themselves global visibility immediately using a platform. So it was literally using their skill set, but switching it to a medium which is, um, which, which is fast paced, really growing um, year on year um, across the world. And I think that it's, it shows a real opportunity. So I instead of them just having their customer base either within their island or the region, they have millions upon millions of people who have these mobile devices who are downloading applications all day long. And it's a really good example of how they've used and how they've leveraged technology um, to, to just get a much bigger audience and a much bigger customer base. Is there um, a, 
in terms of the resources, now you've given us the example of how people can use this to, to make it a lifestyle, to make it a viable lifestyle. Yeah. Um, if you had to give some other examples and to get the information about what you can do, the steps you can take, where would they have to go to get it? You can, I mean, there is so much information available um, on the internet, but the first place to go to get it would be to come to the, to the roadshow this week. Um, there'll be lots of people giving um, workshops uh, which will take you through step by step, you know, what you need to do next to get online. Um, if you want to set up a business, where are the places to go to? The different types of businesses that you can set up, whether it's, um, I mean, there are people who quite successfully set up um, blogs, um, nowadays video blogs, on really core niche areas of their expertise um, and, you know, do things like get sponsorship on board, um, sell products, sell, um, sell books, sell their own workshops. So for myself, um, I, I recently um, published my first book, The 10 Secrets of Social Media Marketing last year. Um, and it's available on Amazon.com. So I no longer have to rely on, say, my local bookshop. Um, because in the UK, unfortunately, there's a lot of the, the major bookshops are closing down. So um, I've been able to use um, the internet as a presence to, to sell my books worldwide. Um, and it's something that, you know, writing is something I have a passion, of, I have a passion to do. And there, there are lots of entrepreneurs who, who, who do similar things. But again, using these online platforms, you reach millions of people at the press of a button. You wrote a book about social media marketing, is that correct? That's correct. Now, there's been an, expl and I have to explore that a little bit. There's been an explosion of social media yeah. worldwide. Um, for the conventional marketing people out there, What's your advice to them? And how, how has it changed the landscape of what we see as marketing? Because when you think marketing, you still think price, promotion, product, and a little bit of TV ad somewhere then. <laughs> so, no, it's a very interesting question. Thank you for that. And I think that um, the first thing is to realize that social media <clears throat> isn't actually a new phenomenon. Um, we have, um, human beings have gathered around media in one way, shape or form socially f for decades, whether it was um, the wireless radio, whether it's you know our favourite TV programmes, newspapers, magazines and so on. And that trend has just transitioned online. Um, when you talk about social media marketing, I like to define that as welcomed advertising. Um, because if you are in a discussion with, with a friend and you're talking about where you, um, you've had a great experience with a car dealership, um, with, um, with, 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 with a fashion retailer, with, with, a, with a phone or, or, or a laptop, that recommendation goes a lot further than a TV advert. And, and, that, and, and that's almost, from the, from the uh, brand's perspective, they welcome that, that kind of advertising. Um, online uh, or even offline, if brands engage with you in a fun, social way, you're a lot more receptive to them. Um, so from the consumer perspective, it's, it's welcomed. Mm -hmm. And it's the kind of thing, it's the kind of environment that social media creates. It creates um, a place where um, there can be a conversation back and forth. Traditionally, um, advertising has been very one way. It's been very broadcast. But they, there is now a, a kind of two-way conversation going on between brands and the consumers so that brands can now understand what consumers want as opposed to just pushing um, their ideas um, you know, on the consumers and therefore the consumers are happier. Um, and if you feel that, you have, um, that you're being listened to, you buy into that brand a lot more. Um, and it creates a bit more of a legacy. But then how would you find that balance with clutter now? And I think of Facebook, you see so many ads now all the time. I mean, I don't even click on any of them. How do you get that balance and use that, that network to your benefit? Well, the interesting thing is that um, as much as these things are so popular and they've taken over the world, they are still in their infancy. Um, Facebook are still finding their feet in regards to ads. Um, Twitter are moving to an ad-based model, but they are still very young. And it's quite interesting. Um, in 2010, Facebook launched um, an advertising model where they would put adverts on your on your Facebook wall, um, but everybody rebelled against it. Everybody was complaining, and literally within a few days, Facebook took it down. And that's something that you would you wouldn't have really seen on a on such a mass medium before. So I think what it does is it it proves that the power is now in the consumers' hands to um, to voice their opinion. And in terms of all the clutter, I think that um, it's really about managing your profile. You know, just managing what you're doing online. Um, just as you would, um, you know, in your normal day-to-day -day activities, people um, often say they, um, you know, they, there's there's resistance to maybe do to shop online and e-commerce and things of this nature. And I say to people, you know, if you're going to buy something online, make sure you can see a telephone number, an address, there's a company registration, the same due diligence you would do offline. You do the same thing online, um, and I think you'll be in good stead. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to be joined by.